Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Supplemented with the Bhakti Siddhanta by Bob, volume number one, please. <laughs> Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. This song was sung by Narottam Das Thakur, a great devotee and acharya in the Gaudiya Vaishnav Sampradaya. The disciplic succession coming down from Lord Chaitanya. Now Tam Das Thakur has written many songs which are recognized as authoritative by all Vaishnavas. He has sung these songs in simple Bengali language, but the purport, the deep meanings of his songs are very significant. In this song he says, Goranga Bolite Habe Pulaka Sharira. One has attained the perfection of chanting when as soon as he chants the name of Lord Goranga, who initiated this Sankirtan movement. And we say in our, uh, we've chosen in our uh, kind of main verse on the website in the fundraising video, Adi Leela, chapter 3, verse 77, 78. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the father and inaugurator of the Sankirtan movement. So, uh, Lord Chaitanya is the topmost leader of the Hare Krishna movement. So, uh, one who cooperates with the supreme leader of the Hare Krishna movement is automatically cooperating with all other secondary leaders or that all other leaders are leaders in as much as they cooperate with the supreme leader Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu one who sacrifices his wealth words body mind intelligence for the Sankirtan movement is recognized by the Lord and endowed with his blessings Whereas all others, by comparison, are considered to be mukha, foolish. Yeah. Because whatever a man might sacrifice or use the body, mind, words, intelligence, reputation, uh, comparatively, is served, uh, those things for the Sankirtan movement are most glorious. So, Narottam Das Thakur is saying one has achieved perfection in chanting, which means the perfection of one's spiritual life, the ultimate goal has been achieved when what happens? It seems like it seems like very very uh, easy thing to do. There is shivering in the body. 
You know, not like the guy yesterday who was <laughs> not imitated false or coming from any kind of mundane mixed emotion, but from uh, ecstasy. And that ecstasy, it's not your ecstasy, it's the Lord's ecstasy. And because you are one in cognizance with his desire, the desire of your supreme, uh, the soul of your very self, then, uh, which is the whole meaning of life, is pleasing the beloved um, supreme personality of Godhead, uh, the master and servant become one in quality. So it's not just ordinary shivering, but it's uh, complete cessation of all material desires and elevation to the stage of uh, spontaneous love of Godhead. That's the shivering that's being explained here. At once there is shivering in, the, in, in his body. This is not to be imitated. But Naratam Das Thakur is asking, when will that opportune moment come to us when there will be shivering of the body as soon as we chant Lord Gauranga's name? And after the shivering, Hari Hari Bolite Narini Babe Nira. While chanting Hare Krishna, there will be tears in the eyes. Nayanam Kaladashudaraya, Badanam Gadgada Rutaya Gira, Pulakar, Nichitam Bapukada, Tava Nama Grahane Bavishiti. Let's say together, O oh my Lord, when will my eyes be decorated with tears of love flowing constantly when I chant your holy name? When will my voice choke up and when will the hairs of my body stand on end at the recitation of your name? Then he says, Ar Kabai Nitai Chander Karuna Hoibe. We are all asking about the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Or we could say we should all be asking about. That's really the only question worth asking is <laughs> Nityananda and why? Because Nityananda is the original spiritual master. So we have to approach Goranga, Lord Chaitanya, through the mercy of Lord Nityananda or through the spiritual master. So the bona fide spiritual master, his symptom, the symptom of the bona fide spiritual master is very easy to understand. Just like in the old days, if you didn't get up from Mangalarti, a bucket of water would be thrown on you. <laughs> and uh, you can understand that you're wet. You don't have to like do a scientific analysis. Hmm, what is this manifestation that has come upon me here? <laughs> it's like, you're taking a shower already? Someone throws a bucket of water? If it's enough water. <laughs> <laughs> but probably because you're in your sleeping bag and your clothes are all wet and you really maybe... Similarly, the Prabhupada says that for those who are, don't want to cleanse the dirt, the dust from their heart and want to keep things as they are, it's not possible to actually experience the real emotions of a pure devotee. So that's the Sahajya Sampradaya and other oppositantic uh, um, um, uh, mutations, permutations, and false manifestations of of so-called bhakti, even though they might imagine themselves. Sahajis imagine themselves to be highly advanced devotees, mad to taste the mellows of love of Godhead, whereas they point out actual pure devotees are just kind of like jnanis and like philosophical speculators, and, you know, they're just absorbed in, you know, discerning matter from spirit, but we're actually the advanced devotees. So uh, the ways of maya are very tricky, and um, we should, uh, the actual Acharya knows the entire gamut or the full range of purification necessary for us to actually stand on the platform, ultimately a pure devotional service, 
and we want to get a certificate from the bona fide acharya that we passed the test. One who actually wants a PH degree, degree from Lord Chaitanya and Ramananda Roy, <laughs> you can read in Ramananda Sambad, must submit himself to the process of purification. Not like, be, you know, become like a, become a professor with academic degrees and teach, you know, extremely high Vaishnava literature to unqualified um, college students who were more or less just rats running out of the Himalayan mountains, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Is it, what was the story that the Himalayan mountains were said to, to they were going to give birth? I thought, wow. And everybody gathered, you know, at the base of the mountains. It was such a, the greatest mountains in the world and they're going to give birth, you know, what's going to come out? And just rats came running out. So, the fan, you know, fabulous university. I think Prabhupada told this story in the Berkeley campus. It was pointed out to them. They have like a big clock tower in the middle and students were committing suicide there. And said, oh, fabulous university degrees and, and the students are committing suicide <laughs> after being taught all this stuff and they become so hopeless. <coughs> so the spiritual master or the professor of transcendental science, he teaches uh, by his own example and from his own realization what is the ultimate goal of life, uh, which basically are three Sambandha, Abhideya, and Prayojan. Knowledge of the eternal relationship of, the etern of, the, of yourself, the eternal living being with the Supreme Self. Knowledge of the functional duties uh, or the, the actual activities in perfection <coughs> based on that relationship and what is the ultimate goal, which is ecstatic love of Godhead in one's original Stai Baba. So that is actually knowledge and anything that's not that is simply nescience. Um, so Lord Nityananda, he is all about teaching those things. So uh, he is the original spiritual master. And of course, in this age of Kali Yuga, Sri Sri Gornitai, Brajendra Nandana say, Sachi Sutta Hailu say, Balaram Hailu Nitai. And what is their method? Harinam Udarilo. That's another very wonderful bhajan. Sometimes Prabhupada said that was his favorite bhajan. Hari Hari Bifale Jan Magoina. That um, the bona fide spiritual master follows and does as Lord Nityananda by opening the marketplace of the pure holy name and freely distributing it to all the four fallen conditioned souls. So uh, bona fide acharya in line from Lord Nityananda, Shishi Gornitai, is distributing Krishna consciousness. That is a primary symptom, pure Krishna consciousness. He is said to be the original spiritual master, so we have to approach Lord Garanga, Lord Chaitanya, through the mercy of Lord Nityananda. And what is the symptom of one who has achieved the causeless mercy of Lord Nityananda. So what is the symptom of one who's actually, now we're saying who's the bona fide spiritual master, but actually perhaps equally, if not even a more important question to ask is who is the bona fide disciple? You know, not that, oh, I approach a spiritual, probably say you don't keep your, the spiritual master as a pet. You know, like I have a pet Pekingese or a, you know, a collie or something, and, you know, and I have nice fashionable clothes, and, you know, I got this kind of spiritual bracelet, you know, that people are wearing, and, you know, and I got a, yeah, I got a guru, you know, and I paid $50, you know, like that. But you approach the spiritual master, the bona fide spiritual master, as you see Sanat and Goswami did, with a straw between his teeth, bowing down, and just saying, K Ami, who am I? People consider, and he was the minister, like prime minister <coughs> in a very powerful empire. And so many people, he was respected, he was scholarly, he was given so much honor. And he just like 
Tuchabad gave all of that up in the face of in, in, in coming face to face with Lord Chaitanya, all of this is useless because I don't know who I am. I do not know my duty. I, I don't have Sambandha and I don't have Abhideya. This is very important that the devotee and Krishna says in the last verse of the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 11, Maybe 1155, or if somebody has it on their thing, just pull it up real fast. Um, two things that one has to be free from, which are more or less illusory uh, masks, you know, like if you're wearing a Halloween mask, which has to be taken off so you don't look all hideous and ugly. Read it. My dear Arjuna, he who engages in my pure devotion service, free from the contaminations of fruitive activities and mental speculation, he who works for me, who makes me the supreme goal of his life, and who is friendly to every living being, he certainly comes to me. So this fruit of activity and mental speculation. In chapter 1, questioned by the sages, we just passed through reading in the Bhagavatam, Prabhupada says in one purport how the devotees they're not like the karmis we're engaged in, and he uses this word rampant, fruit of activity, rampant, rampage, <laughs> a rampage, you know, money, money, I got, right, and big visual, take a smell, have an incentive, money, money, <laughs> or uh, dry mental speculation, in other words, uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta uh, came some hours late when his when Srila Bhakti you know, Thakur was departing the world, but his mother, Bhagavati Devi, great saintly Vaishnavi, told him that his last instructions were preach Goranam uh, the glories of Goranam, Goradam and Gorakam which means activities. Sometimes you hear the word Kriya Yoga. Kriya means activities. You know, what do you do? So if you're not doing for Krishna, like Prabhupada would say that even in, if you're doing, you're attempting to perform devotional service, but you're not chanting 16 rounds and hearing and chanting properly, then it's practically non-different than karma, than, than mundane activities. And that is actually Prabhupada would say, don't be surprised who leaves, but who stays. In other words, the um, what, what is a, somebody find a word, you know, like uh, narrowing down process, you know, to huh? Success rate? Success what? That's, that's, no. Um, refining. Huh? Refining. Refining, yeah, but like, you know, the, you know, many people can come in, but then those who actually Converging. achieve... Converging. Huh? Converging. Anyway, we, you know, the, it's a, a very exact, it's a very... Converging. Intense <laughs> process. Um... There are many, many, you know, there are many, many anarthas that are there in our heart, as for one, that anarthas means uncleansed away material desires, and this material world is just full of different um, allurements, or just like magnets, or sticky substances that just like pull people who have their these material desires, and just creates all different types of illusory activities that they just become... Um, bewildered, the bewildered spirit soul thinks himself to do an activity which are actually carried out by nature. So, uh, a, de a practicing devotee comes to realize that I'm hampered by all of these material desires and fruit of actions. And he prays fervently to the Lord to remove these material desires. Like Prahlad Maharaj, he prays to the Lord in the Shringadev, I have. The only request I have is that I have no material desires in my heart. And we see that um, 
when great devotees are asked for benedictions, just like Mark and Deya Rishi, uh, Lord Shiva and God Asuma appear before him and he, he begged for unflinching devotional service to the Supreme Lord and to Lord Shiva himself. And he was granted that and many other benedictions. Uh, such as the nature of devotional service. So, the symptom of, of a person who has actually achieved the causeless mercy of Lord Nityananda is that he has no more material desires. The nature of uh, fruit of activity in this material world is I do something and I expect something in return. The more that I do, the more I expect to get in exchange. So many times, or it's just it's common with uh, neophyte devotees, Kanishta Adhikari devotees, is that they become frustrated. They think, well, I've done so much, and where is my, my uh, reward, you know? I want to become famous amongst the devotees, I want a high position, or even more admirably, where is my taste in Krishna consciousness? I'm, it seems it's dry, I'm working so hard, or I have to work so hard and get up so early and do so much service, and, and then I just get like maybe a little itty bitty little thing which lasts for a moment and then I gotta work again. These are all there to wean us of deep-rooted material desires. So th th these are actually good symptoms. <clears throat> so the actual mercy is no more material desires. Finished. And this human form of life is so orchestrated or arranged by Krishna himself says one place in the second canto describing the universal form that human society is the residential quarters of the Lord. Mm. That, and Prabhupada gave such, you see how Prabhupada was so enthusiastic for Gurukul. I'm just hearing Prabhupada speaking in New Delhi in November 1973, Shama Sundar is present. He's praising his daughter Saraswati. Born to devotee parents right from the beginning. I think at that time she was like five years old and she was chanting six rounds, Prabhupada is saying. And this is very, you know, very good. And just how Prabhupada set up Google system. Of course, Prabhupada would say, you know, anyone from whatever age can be successful. Uh, from the time of understanding the urgency of taking the Krishna consciousness. But especially, you know, Prabhupada would say, you American boys and girls, the flower of your country, you know, young, you know, young, you know, <coughs> devotees were joining Prabhupada as teenagers, 20 years old, or very early. Actually, it's an example of Kirtan Ananda, Satsvarup Maj, they were. 26, 29 years old. At the, you know, that, that you were considered a very old devotee. You know, 26 years old. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So that if you live your whole life following the regulative principles, and Prabhupada said, you will go back home back to God in one lifetime. But that's, that's the symptom of one's sincerity that one sticks to the process throughout one's entire life, good times, bad times, ups, downs, whatever one sticks to. And then you go back home, back to Godhead. So we must aspire for that and pray for that and work for that. No more material desire. Ar kabai nitai chandir karuna haibe samsara basana mor kabe tucha habe. Samsara basana means desire for material enjoyment. Basana, but, and notice what it, the samsara, okay, material enjoyment, but in the cycle of repeated birth, death, disease, and old age. And Narottam Das want wonders when it will become very insignificant. There's a glorification of Mahaj Bhart, of which this planet is still named Bhart Varsha. 
that he gave up his vast empire, his royal treasury, his ministers, his influence, his beautiful young wife, you know, everything. Just like one gives up stool after excreting it because he was attracted by the beauty of the Supreme Lord. So, um, and give up everything in this material world, all attraction to any type of opulent or so-called desirable position or residential quarters. Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his last writing, Svanyama Devdastakam, he's describing how much he is attracted to his sacred bhajan kutir in Navadweep Dham. Compared to this, you know, uh, you know, palaces with vast princely riches and all other types of places it is nothing to me as my lonely Bhajan Kutir and Navadweep Dham is as desirable. Of course, as long as we have bodies, we have to accept so many material things, but not in the spirit of enjoyment, but only to keep body and soul together. Naratam Das says further, Rupa Ragu Nata Paibi Haibi Akuti. When shall I be very much eager to study the books left by the six Goswamis? And we can also say, when, I, when shall I be very much qualified to study the books left by the six Goswamis? If we attempt to read Vaishnav literature that's on the superlative platform, of um, understanding the Lord's reciprocation with uh, the highest devotees in the entire cosmic manifestation and we're not qualified, the result can be disastrous. We have the opposite effect. Instead of freeing us from material desire and filling us with spiritual desire, uh, what is the verse in Bengali in the CC? Kam, no, no. Kamis, kam, right. Right, the desire to satisfy one's own senses is lust, and, and the desire to satisfy the senses of Krishna is prema. Uh, and in the Ramananda Samvad, it's described as the difference between iron and gold. They're both metals, but vastly different in quality. So, uh, Narottam Das is teaching us how to pray when I shall be very much eager. And I'm, and I'm adding, when am I should be very much qualified? Because Rupa Goswami is the father of devotional service. He has written a book called Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, in which there are nice instructions on devotional service. And Prabhupada, in his um, uh, preface introduction to Nectar of Instruction, says that how Rupa Goswami is given exalted literatures like Vidagda Madhava, Lalita Madhava. Prabhupada says in one place in the CC that going to Vrindavan actually means to take shelter of the six Goswamis by reading books like Vidagda Madhava, Lalita Madhava, and topmost scripture, Ujvala Nilamani. Uh, but Prabhupada says in those books, but this nectar of instruction constitutes necessary instruction for neophyte devotees. So actually to admit that I'm neophyte devotee or not as advanced as I uh, think I am, this is actually a very good qualification because this will uh, place you in a position where the Guru Parampara, the spiritual master, can actually elevate you properly because the only qualification to achieve the realm of bhakti is complete honesty. You know, no amount of, uh, you know, um, make show. You know, you're not going to, you're not going to go back home back to God by making a, a false artificial show. These topics are also dealt with in the Chaitanya Charitamrita and other books, and we have given the summary of those directions in our book, Teachings of Lord Chaitanya. <coughs> One has to learn of the conjugal loving affairs of Radha and Krishna through the teachings of the six Goswamis. And correspondingly, if we don't um, 
try to understand or at least hold in the utmost reverential regard. That's why it's described for the neophyte devotee, the worship of Radha and Krishna is actually done through Lakshmi Narayan in majestic awe and reverence. Then the danger is that we will be bewildered by man-woman relationships in this material world, which for sure and 100% keeps the key locked on the prison door for you staying in this material world. What is that? Uh, in the fifth canto. Pumsam say it. In the English. Basic principle of material life. And, uh, Ties the hearts of the man and, and woman. From that, uh, I and mine. Right. So that is why uh, we worship Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. They are the absolute truth. And all perverted reflections of everything in all variety in this material world are simply stemming from their sublime uh, pastimes. Jai Radha Madhava, Kunja Bihari, Gopi Janavalva, Giri Varadari. As long as the mind is too much absorbed in materialistic thought, one cannot enter into the kingdom of Vrindavan. But Narottam Das Thakur says, Vishaya Chatiya Kabe, Sudha Habe Man, Kabe Hama Herabo, Sri Vrindavan. When the mind is completely purified, being freed from material anxieties and desires, then I shall be able to understand Vrindavan and the conjugal love of Radha and Krishna and then my spiritual life will be successful. So this is the um, target we should always keep in mind. Why are we doing this? Why are we going through all this? What is the purpose? Why are we saying no to all what's going on outside? This is the reason. I will be able to understand Vrindavan, which is the supreme abode, the Param Dham, the topmost residential place. Like, you know, seeing the real estate oh you know like uh, not the Bargaranga's parents wow you live here and it's so nice so it's just a common thing you know what to speak of this townhouse was like uh, next to the Barnes and Noble bookstore on 14th street yeah. or something 17th street or even better than that you know like over by Gramercy Park in Irving Place you know or what is it what we what is the most? Oh, Millionaire's Row on Fifth Avenue. Say we had a building four times this size. Oh. Wow. <laughs> so this is just a tiny, 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 far away emanation of please give me residence in Sri Vrindavan Dam. And this Krishna consciousness movement is giving information of the topmost real estate. And you don't need billions and trillions of dollars. You simply need a pure heart, pure devotional service, and the blessings of the pure devotees. So uh, I was thinking that, and I wanted to read something very amazing that happened exactly 100 years ago. Maybe next month, the appearance day of Vishnu Priya Devi. Wow. What time of year does that happen? I have no idea. I think it's this beginning time of the year. Would somebody like to learn how to chant Hare Krishna? Uh, yeah. Good. Oh, here it is. On 5th February, 1919, the Avir Titi of Sri Vishnu Priya Devi at the Uttaldangi Junction Road, Srila Saraswati Thakur reestablished Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Vishna Vishva Vaishnava Sabha as the Vishva Vaishnava 
Raja Sabha. So this is association of devotees under the shelter of the pure devotee spiritual masters, the pure devotees of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and, all, and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. And we'll see in this very, very beautiful description of Srila Bhakti Sanatha Saraswati the, um, the beauty, magnanimity and importance of uh, actual Vaishnav Sangha. So this International Society for Krishna Consciousness as established by Srila Prabhupada is uh, his honest and sincere uh, contribution to continue uh, the very bright illuminating association of pure devotees all over the world. <clears throat> During the inauguration ceremony he gave a history of the Sabha a summary of which was printed in the Sajana Toshini. On the recent appearance day of Sri Vishnu Priya, many pure devotees convened at the Calcutta Sri Bhakti Vinod Asan. This is what he called the Gaudiya Math at that time, and it later became called Gaudiya Math or Gaudiya Mission. Even though this Sabha is eternally established, it has descended into the world three times. 11 years after the disappearance of Mahaprabhu when the world was beginning to darken. So the Supreme Lord disappears, the pure devotee on, on the topmost platform of Mahabhagavat, they leave, then things become diminished. We'll say that word. Or obscured. Six brilliant stars remained arisen in Sri Braj Mandal, that's the six Goswamis, and were engaged in the service of Gaur Chandra's Vishva Vaishnav Raja Sabha. Apart from them, sev several other Mahatmas headed by Srila Bhugarbha Goswami, Srila Lokanath Goswami, and Srila Krishnadas, excuse me, Srila Kashivar Goswami, beautified Sri Gaur Chandra's Vishva Vaishnav Raja Sabha. 64 dear associates of Sri Gaur Sundar and the 12 friends of Srila Nityananda Prabhu increased the beauty of this Sri Vishva Vaishnav Raja Sabha. Sri Nityananda Prabhu's Nam Hatta was a main branch of the Vishva Vaishnava Raja Sabha. Sri Bhagavat Krishna Chaitanya Dev is the purifier of Kali Yuga. He is the teacher who gives knowledge, Sambandha, of the method to worship himself, the original form of Godhead, who ascertains the path of devotional service and practice, Abhideya, and that Krishna Prema is the Prayojan. Sri Chaitanya Dev is Krishna Chandra himself, the king of all Vaishnavas in the world, Vishva Vaishnav Raj. The gathering of his devotees is the Sri Vishva Vaishnav Raja Sabha. The foremost ministers among the members of the society are Sri Rupa Goswami and his honored Sri Sanatan Goswami. Those who consider themselves followers of Sri Rupa are the members of this Sri Vishva Vaishnav Raja Sabha. The leaders among them are Sri Prabhupada Srimad Raghunath Das Goswami and Sri Sri Prabhupada Jiva Goswami. Hari Bol! Welcome to you. Is this your first time in the house? Yes, first time. Oh boy. Hare Krishna, say Hare Krishna to everyone. Hare Krishna. On Facebook, probably they're watching Oh. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I see, I'm sure there's going to be a whole lot of cooking going on. Right? Pretty, pretty. So, um, this is Srila Bhakti Siddhanta's uh, description of the glory of the Lord's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's devotees in disciplic succession, spoken just shy of a hundred years ago in February 1919. During that period of the six Goswamis being present, the misfortune, uh, during that period of misfortune, oh, excuse me. This is a different. During that period of misfortune for the world's inhabitants, after Sri Gaurachandra displayed the pastime of his disappearance, Sri Mad Jiva Prabhu preached Sri Bhagavad Dharma on the command of Sri Sri Rupa Sanatan. Those who Sri Sri Rupa Sanatan accepted as disciples became the leaders and later the directors of the Sabha. 
Upon becoming the prime director of the Sabha, Sri Jiva Prabhupada termed the teachings that Sri Rupa had propagated in the Sabha as the Bhagavat Sandarbha or Sat Sandarbha. Knowing this Sat Sandarbha to be the teachings of Sri Sri Rupa Sanatan, members of the Sri Vishva Vaishnav Raja Sabha thus perform Hari Bhajan. The pure and transcendental method of worship given by Sri Mad Raghunath Das Goswami, one of the leaders of the Sri Vishva Vaishnav Raja Sabha, by bearing the commands of Sri Rupa on his head, is the adorable object for devotees of Sri Gora. By taking shelter at the pure feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath, Sri Pad Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami Prabhu, the king of the family of Rastikas, became one of the directors of the Sri Vishva Vaishnav Raja Sabha, and subsequently, Sri Narutam Thakur Mahodaya, the crest jewel of transcendental devotees, decorated the crown of this Vishva Vaishnav Raja Sabha in the post of its director. Later, such kings of devotees as Sri Sripad Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur spread their moonlike rays upon the Sabha. The darkness of night cannot always predominate over the three worlds which are covered by ignorance. Therefore, we sometimes behold shining stars in the spiritual firmament which is bathed in the moonlike rays of Sri Gorachandra. In uh, in 1885, a brilliant star of the universal Vaishnav firmament reilluminated the Sri Vishva Vaishnav Raj Sabha. That's referring to Bhakti Vinod Thakur. During that period, many people in the great city of Calcutta received light from this Sabha. As a result of that light, the sight of the cooling rays of Sri Gorachandra reflected in loving eyes is nowadays visible in this world. Just as autumnal clouds suddenly spread in the sky and cover the moon's rays, so materialistic non-Vaishnavas in the dress of Vaishnavas cause hindrances to that trance of the light in society. It is now four years since the servant of the king of universal Vaishnavas and leader of Sri Rupa's followers departed from this world. So actually it was four and a half years ago he departed in June. Uh, 1914, so this is February 1919. Seeing this, uh, and sometimes his light is covered by mist. Seeing this, those who have sheltered, are sheltered at the feet of the followers of Sri Rupa have become firmly resolved to protect the light of discourses on Hari from the strong gale or wind. The transcendental flower of Krishna Prema that budded forth from the Acharyas headed by Sri Rupa, Raghunath, and Sri Jiva was manifest to the world as a blossom by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and after his dis disappearance, it continued to bloom fully. Sri Rupa's followers have protected that beautiful and fragrant flower from the attack of depraved people, and thus have aided the olfocatory function of the bees swarming at Sri Gora's feet. In this connection, we request everyone to read Chapter 9 of the Adi Leela of Chaitanya Charitamrita, composed by the King of Rasik devotees about the divine loving activities of the gardener Sri Chaitanya. The members of the Sabha will not accept any service from those determined to oppose it. Gora Sundar, reinforcing their service to Aga, Baka, and Putana within their hearts, will not give them a place in the Vishva Vaishnav Raj Sabha. Mm. You can read an essay by uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur about Putana and liking that unto uh, the empiric philosophers and false professors making sure that they're uh, like uh, the baby or their students, just like Putin came, was killing children. He kills all the students, all the children, with false hedonistic, atheistic philosophy. And if an and if an unbiased person sees, he sees that the children of this age are being intentionally sent to the slaughterhouses of so-called education. 
We are keenly distressed for such persons and weep for them. Had it been Gorasundar's intention that only Sri Rupa Prabhu should come to this world and that he should not have any followers or that only the Nam Hatha of Nityananda Prabhu should exist and not the Vishva Vaishnav Rajasabha, then he would not have increased the number of Rupa Nugas. Sri Guru Parampara Ki Jai. So, uh, after a long time, uh, I basically remember where we were. Uh, we're reconvening the uh, weekly Chaitanya Charitamrita class. And we're going to begin in Adi Lila Chapter 7, Lord Chaitanya in five features. And we're going to begin on verse number 71. And Lord Chaitanya has um, come to Benares and upon the request of Tapana Mishra and Chandrasekhar Acharya, who uh, were very hurt by hearing Lord Chaitanya criticized, he's just sentimentally chanting Hare Krishna with fools and fanatics, just like maybe you know some respectable people would have come by yesterday in Grand Central and seen as... Mongol posted uh, wildlife in New York City, right? <laughs> the guy took his, you know, took his, was bare chested and barefoot, you know, and, and like, you know, and then uh, there was another person who, uh, although sincere in his own idea, was a little bit kind of a, a spastic display, and, uh, you know, other various. Uh, ribald specimens would pass by through the course of our performing the Sangatan Yagna and people think and he tried to, you know well the real Hari could, what, you know, is it sometimes, is he with you? <laughs> no, he just uh, just sort of latched on to us but he's not uh, you are, a, this is uh, verse 68, you are a sannyasi. Why then do you indulge in chanting and dancing, engaging your sankirtan movement in the company of fanatics? Meditation and the study of Vedanta are the sole duties of a sannyasi. Why do you abandon these to dance with fanatics? You look as brilliant as if you were Narayan himself, this is the ultimate game of Mayavad and Mayavad philosophy that we all become God. Will you kindly explain the reason that you have adopted the behavior of lower class people? Prabhu Kahi Suna Shripad Ihra Karan Guru Mora Murka Deki Karila Sasan. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied to Prabhupada Saraswati, My dear sir, kindly hear the reason. My spiritual master considered me a fool, and therefore he chastised me. So we're going to try our level best to stick to our schedule here. So uh, we'll read the purport. <laughs> When Prakashananda Saraswati inquired from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu why he neither studied Vedanta nor performed meditation, Lord Chaitanya presented himself as a number one fool in order to indicate that the present age, Kali Yuga, is an age of fools and rascals in which it is not possible to obtain perfection simply by reading Vedanta philosophy and meditating. So this is paving the way to describe the glory of the Yuga Dharma, Harinam Sankirtan. Harinam, the Shastras strongly recommend Harinam, 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 Eva Kevalam, Kalona Steva, Nasteva, Nasteva, Eva Gatir Anyata. In this age of quarrel and hypocrisy, the only means of deliverance is the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. There is no other way. There is no other way. There is no other way. Three times. People in general in Kali Yuga are so fallen that it is not possible for them to obtain perfection simply by studying Vedanta philosophy. One should therefore seriously take to the constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord. Uh, 
and I'll just read a little bit of the next verse and then we'll stop and maybe if you want to ask a question or two we can allow we can do that but otherwise you are a fool he said you are not qualified to study Vedanta philosophy and therefore you must always chant the holy names of Krishna this is the essence of all mantras or Vedic hymns Purport, Sri Bhakti Sananta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj comments in this connection, one can become perfectly successful in the mission of his life if he acts exactly according to the words he hears from the mouth of his spiritual master. This acceptance of the words of the spiritual master is called Shrota Vakya, which indicates that the disciple must carry out the spiritual master's instructions without deviation. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur remarks in this connection that the disciple must accept the words of his spiritual master as his life and soul. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu here confirms this by saying that since his spiritual master ordered him to chant the holy name of Krishna, he always chanted the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra according to this direction. Krishna Mantra Japa Sada A Mantra Sar. Hare Krishna. Any questions or comments? Yes. When he sees fit to do so. Yes. Any other questions? If we keep receiving Prabhupada's books and chanting the Holy Name on the sea, then he will see that we fit something out. Doubtlessly. <laughs> Actually, by doing by doing that, by doing this, you're already back home, back to Godhead. Preachers already liberated. And like simultaneously, the anathas go away. And... What is it? Um, just as um, um, the feeling of hunger goes away, and then satisfaction increases as one eats. I think there's a there's a verse that. Yeah. Yeah. Vishnu Chitta has something to contribute. No, that's a question. Um, so you mentioned how um, honesty is. Um, honesty is the best policy. <laughs> so, honesty um, is the key to achieving success in devotional service. Um, so. <clears throat> some bold and boldness and courage to remain honest and uh, tendencies in our movement especially that uh, as one becomes as one spends more years in the movement one is considered senior and uh, so people junior um, look up to this person yet uh, the devotee himself knows that they are also on the path of purification and uh, so it seems sometimes embarrassing when uh, you know when we are treated on, on a level that we are definitely not at yet uh, so yeah we should um, those who are in the um, senior position should be very careful not to allow uh, the juniors to give them more um, praise and respect than they actually should. That was a big mistake that was made just after Prabhupada's departure, the, the, um, how um, initiations and spiritual masters and disciples, the spiritual masters would conduct themselves. And uh, not just for purification, but even on the professional stage, um, there's one always is worshiping one superior. Um, it's just that we're hearing how great personalities and in their own right and how they're worshiping the, the predecessor. This is not facilitatory for some ultimate stage. Like Prabhupada was walking on the, the those little walkways in the rice fields in Mayapur and they, they were crossing over like a, you know like a water canal and so he took Bhavananda's arm Prabhupada or Bhavananda and you know and as soon as he crossed the other side then, then Prabhupada like violently went like 
So this is any propagate the lesson. This is the Mayavad. They take help from the spiritual master, but when they then they you know they they want to take the position of the spiritual master and become themselves. So one of the attractions of Srila Prabhupada, you can see how different devotees and disciples said the Prabhupada wasn't coming as a self-proclaimed individual in and of himself. He presented himself as the humble servant of his spiritual master. So no matter, no matter how high one rises, so to speak, uh, he's always... Um, Showing how he's the, and what's Shri Bhakti Sananta Saraswati Thakur himself, you know, he was even questioned that you know you're so elevated and erudite and such a scholar, and yet your spiritual master is like, and 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 Shri Bhakti Sananta Saraswati would say he is the very being and the the very reason for everything that I'm doing, and they they were like taking a. A ferry boat ride when this question was asked and he said you see all of these whirling parts on the boat but inside there's a battery which is silent and not moving but the battery is the basis for the entire operation so that my spiritual master is the battery so, uh, you know there's, there's everything is very natural and organic if we follow properly but that is the devotional way that uh, you know one's, one's always worshiping one's predecessor, even in perfection. And you can read the exalted descriptions of uh, how of these things, particularly in the writings of Bhakti Vinodak or Narottam Das or Yes. Uh, the verse uh, eleven two forty two. Okay. It says devotion, direct experience, the supreme Lord, and detachment from other things. These three. These three occur simultaneously for one who is taking shelter of the Supreme Personality of God. In the same way that pleasure, nourishment, and relief from hunger come simultaneously and increasingly with each bite for a person engaged in eating. Mm. Prabhupada was phenomenally successful, but he gave all credit to his spiritual master. Prabhupada never lost sight. He never became like, wow, you know, just always just and that allows empowerment to make such like amazing manifestations, you know, like Prabhupada, you know, he like he conquered the world with you know, he spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. He opened so many temples and it's still continuing. It's because in we say this the secret of success. <coughs> what did it say here? What was the term that was used? <coughs> what was it? Shrota Vakya? No, was it? Oh, that, that was the part where the disciples simply. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. One who is true to the service of Lord Nityananda can even excel Lord Nityananda. Uh, but because he didn't, he did, I didn't do it. All credit goes to my predecessors. Ultimately, Krishna is doing. Let Krishna make, use me as his instrument. He can make what seems to be a big manifestation or a small one. Or yes, and Bhaktisanda was saying, you know, oh, you know, you're a big ghost Dianandi and he's just a budget and he said there's no dispar there's no disparity between the two. We're both it's both equal. So these are very nice things. Anything else? Thank you very much. Shri Chaitanya Charitam Rita Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Sadhu Sangha. Shri Vish Vishva Vaishnav Sabaraj Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Thanks. Let's get Hare Krishna.